Welcome again to the 2022 City of Phoenix Gain event. Um, myself, Stefan, and Bill, we would like to, to welcome everyone and thank everyone for coming out. Um, it's such a wonderful opportunity for us to gather and get together as a community and to build together. Um, with that being said, Mr. Bill. Welcome, yes. So the last time we were able to do this was three years ago, 2019. Uh, it's felt like a long, long, long time. time for us. So we are so happy to have everybody here today. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is introduce our national anthem. Uh, so Miss Tina Clark is the music director, and it's the Garfield Middle School Choir. If you would please come up to them. We truly appreciate that. And we want to say thank you for everyone coming out again. We want to say thank you to all of our sponsors, um, for everyone that's helped put this together. Thank you, Phoenix PD, all the other wonderful sponsors and departments that came out. Parks, this doesn't happen but just one piece of the city. It takes everybody to make things happen in the community. And that just shows today like what it takes is everybody coming together. So thank you, everyone, again. And Bill, do we have something? Yes, so I'd like to introduce, um, and yes, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I mean, Phoenix Fire Department, uh, Parks and Rec, uh, just to get for the, I mean, we could put this together without everybody's help, uh, so we really appreciate it. Um, Stefan hasn't mentioned it yet, but he's one of our programs that we work closely with. Uh, it's called FIT, which is Fulfillment and Training. So we work with young, young uh, kids, take them to go work out. And then we uh, talk about some little life lessons afterwards. We'll just give them something uh, positive to do. So thank you, Steph, for being here. And no be my, my co-partner up here on the stage. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce our director of the City of Phoenix Housing, Titus Matthews, and he, and uh, also the president and CEO of Gorman & Company, Brian Swanton. Good afternoon, everyone. Weren't the kids wonderful? That was a wonderful production. So thank you very much for coming and doing that. I want to thank everyone for being here this afternoon on a toasty day, but great day, great event. And the first housing development in the Edison East Lake Choice neighborhood community. Thank you to Bill and Stefan for hosting the GAIN event and introducing me as well. This is such an important milestone for this community and glory have been made possible with partners who you will be hearing from today, as well as many other partners who are in the audience, including city departments, many nonprofits providing services to this community and to the community residents who have been a part of the planning and implementation efforts from the beginning. The Resident Leadership Council has played such an active role in guiding the revitalization and I thank each one for the valuable time and the vision for this community. And I think this is a great looking community, so I think we should tell the HUD folks to give us another choice implementation grant down the road. <laughs> Two years ago, where Saluna is now today, today, this was a vacant lot. 
for, add, for a lot adding to the blight and heat in the community. And over the short period of time, we have activated a lot with much needed housing for families and individuals. Now Saluna is a place where families can feel at home, feel safe and grow and build relationships with the community. It's close to nearby transportation and where families can access resources, use the existing park amenities, now with the new amenities coming up in the future as well. Edison Impact Hub across the street will be renovated and provide a health clinic and employment resources as well. In total, over 1,000 new units will be built in the neighborhood, including affordable market rate and home ownership units as well. This is an incre increase of over 400 new housing units created in the city and just in this neighborhood. So congratulations to the community. I want to thank the Phoenix Elementary School District number one, Edison and Garfield Elementary Schools for being excellent partners. In addition, I want to thank the children who took part today in the band as well as sang for us this afternoon. They were wonderful. Having Edison School across the street allows us to align our focus on education, a key component of the Choice Neighborhood Program. Saluna is a great space and provides so many wonderful amenities, but this is just the beginning of the transformation of this neighborhood. We are excited to continue the momentum of transformation with Harmony at the Park opening around the corner as well as kicking off a new park improvements next year, along with exciting changes that will be coming to the neighborhood. Again, thank you for being here at the celebrating this exciting event. At this time, I want to introduce Lorene Montero, the City of Phoenix archaeologist, to read the Housing Department's Land Acknowledgement Statement. Lorene. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The housing, can you hear me? The housing department acknowledges the city of Phoenix is located within the ancestral territories of the Akimel, Otham, and Pipash peoples who have inhabited the landscape from time immemorial to present day and whose knowledge and stewardship of the land and waterways allow us to be here today. The landscape is sacred and it reflects cultural values central to the Otham and Pipash way of life and their self-definition. This land continues to be spiritually connected to the Otham of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community and the Gila River Indian Community, both of whom are confederations of two unique cultures with their own languages, customs, cultures, religions, and histories. These places are tangible reminders of the Otham and Pipash about shared attitudes, goals, and practices that characterize who they are, where they belong, and how they relate to each other in the past, continuing today and into the future. This acknowledgement demonstrates our commitment to work in partnership with the ancestral indigenous communities to foster understanding, appreciation, and respect for this heritage. The housing department is committed to honor the vital meaning and intent of this land acknowledgement statement. Thank you. Thank you, Laureen. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Swanton. I'm the president and CEO at Gorman and & Company. And uh, Gorman is the uh, partner with the city of Phoenix, a co-development partner. Uh, this is what we call a public-private partnership where we take former government-owned public housing uh, and transform it through a public-private uh, partnership using tax credits and all sorts of other unique uh, financing mechanisms that under the old public housing rules you're not allowed to tap into. So it's really exciting uh, to be able to bring that here to Phoenix, Arizona. Um, this project is the single largest public housing redevelopment in the history of the state of Arizona. It started with a $30 million Choice Neighborhoods grant, so thank you to our friends at HUD for that. Uh, we're coming back for some more, by the way. Um, and, but that $30 million seeded uh, almost $400 million in investment, much of that private investment. 
uh, in this neighborhood. So having Saluna finished is very exciting. Uh, today is a, a great day, but the work is just getting started as uh, Titus mentioned. So um, I wanna thank uh, the city of Phoenix for trusting us. I wanna thank the Edison Eastlake community and the residents in this neighborhood uh, for trusting Gorman and Company and the city of Phoenix for coming into your backyards and helping you transform this community. It's been an amazing ride uh, and it's not over yet. So um, I, I also wanna call out Cindy Stotler. I know she's gonna be speaking a little bit, uh, but the former housing director uh, and Angela Duncan with the housing department, this was really their brainchild back in 2015. Um, and there's not a lot of incentive oftentimes for public sector employees to take this kind of risk. Um, but that didn't matter to Cindy and Angela. They stepped forward and said that this risk was well worth it. And I think we can see the fruits of that, uh, that labor and that risk-taking uh, mentality. So thank you to Cindy and Angela for your, your foresight in bringing this forward. Um, finally, I'm gonna call up uh, the best mayor and the best city in America. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that Mayor Gallego, who was a council person at the time we started this process, a lot of us got promotions through all of this. Yeah. Um, but uh, the mayor uh, didn't just sit behind the desk um, and watch. She uh, got out from behind her desk, actually flew to Washington, D.C. several times to make it clear to the federal government, to Congress, and to others, and to anyone who would listen, uh, that this neighborhood needs attention, it needs resources. And honestly, if it wasn't for the advocacy of Mayor Kate Gallego, uh, we wouldn't be standing here today. So it's really my honor uh, and my privilege for inviting up to the podium Mayor Kate Gallego. Thank you. I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. Brian, thank you for that wonderful introduction, but more importantly, for the work that Gorman has done with the city of Phoenix. Thank you to Titus, Cindy, our partners at HUD, and, and everyone who has made today possible. This really is an exciting moment for the city of Phoenix. Uh, for me, it began with a series of forums and community meetings we had with our public housing residents shortly after I was elected to city council. Uh, they would ask us tough questions about what our expectations were and how ambitious we would be. Uh, they pushed on us about could we, could we do better? Uh, the units they were living in were pretty small, limited number of bedrooms, very small windows, uh, people using clotheslines and, and swamp coolers, and they challenged us to do better and said, is, is this somewhere where you would wanna live? And having just looked at the amazing views from the balcony in this gorgeous unit with top-notch fixtures, yes, this is somewhere where I would be proud to live. The team has done an amazing job, and I think we have met the very high expectations our residents set for us. This really is a project that was driven by our residents. It has so many features that they wanted. Uh, children, our kids are at the center, whether it be the amazing recreation amenities or even they are part of the decorations. Our residents said they wanted community gathering spaces where parents could get some shade and kids could have fun thanks to city partners, including the Parks and Recreation Department, we have delivered on that. Um, they wanted to be able to stay together. There's a lot of long-term friendships in this community and, and folks will have the chance to continue those deep relationships. So it is a great celebration of Phoenix and the people who live in this community today. Uh, we are joined today by so many people, but I wanted to recognize a few. Our we have two deputy city managers here. So Inger and Gina, thank you for your work to make today possible. Uh, part of the land came together thanks to, yeah. yes. <laughs> part of the land came together and was able to be assembled thanks to our industrial development authority. So thank you to Juan and your team for making this possible. We were able to do bigger things at scale with more amenities because it is a larger project and that allowed us to, to work out the economics so that we could have great community spaces and, and all of those really important amenities that our community challenged us to do. Um, it's wonderful that we're doing this while we are hosting an event to get Arizona involved in neighborhoods and 
bring people together to develop a safer community. So I want to thank our public safety partners who are here today and every day building that vision we have for a better, safer community. We just swore in a new police chief at the city of Phoenix today, so it is a big day on so many levels. Uh, we're showing what our values are at a community and top-notch affordable housing is one of those. We have an ambitious plan in the city to create or preserve 50,000 affordable units, and we're taking an important step forward today in doing that. We want everyone to be able to have a, a great place to close, call home. And I'm just so proud of how great these units look and, and the amazing amenities, the fact that there are units with a large number of bedrooms to reflect that we have families of many sizes in this community. So I think we've really delivered on what the community challenged us to do, although we still have more work to do, and, and we're so thankful to show it off to our partners at, at the federal government. We could not have done this much without the housing, without HUD, and, and we hope to continue to work with you, as well as the state of Arizona, represented today by Cindy Stotler, who was our housing director when she and I began this journey, and we're so thankful that we have Director Matthews to take us to the next level. I get to work very closely with Councilmember Garcia, who now represents this area and who is incredibly passionate about great high quality housing as well. So lots of success to celebrate and hopefully more in the future. Thank you to Titus and Brian. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Gallagher, for your support and commitment to this project and to the Phoenix residents, too. At this time, I'd like to introduce Councilman Carlos Garcia, who's been a passionate advocate for increasing affordable housing stock in this neighborhood. When I first became director, he sat me down and said he had a vision for increasing the supply of affordable housing. So thank you, Councilman Garcia, for doing that. Councilman Garcia currently represents a community of more than 200,000 people in District 8 as a council member of the City of Phoenix. He was elected to the City Council in 2019 after a long-standing career as a community activist and believes in putting people first always. His work stands on the belief that diverse people with common struggles and vision have the power to change the course of history. Please welcome Councilman Carlos Garcia. Thank you all so much, uh, really happy to be here. I think it's great to have the contrast. Like the mayor said, some of the units that were in the area didn't have 220, so that's why there was the clotheslines. There wasn't the power to even have dryers. And uh, I think when we did the groundbreaking um, for Saluna, I think I said something, and I'm sure Cindy remembers, because I said, we need to do a thousand more of these. Um, I, I was just starting. Um, but I still think we need a thousand more of these. Like the mayor said, we have a big gap. Uh, we're trying to get 90,000 uh, affordable units in the city. This week, the mayor and I were also fortunate enough uh, to do a groundbreaking in South Phoenix where we're going to add more units. And, and I think the message today is the affordable units don't have to look like affordable units used to. Affordable units need to be, like the mayor said, somewhere where we would all want to live, and they need to be surrounded by support and services. Uh, the city's dedicated to that education, to making sure we're doing culturally competent and, and supporting people with what they need. Uh, we have the Aratera Community Center that's nearby. Uh, we're gonna hear from Eva and PRC and some of the work that they've done there. Um, and you know, that, that hubs, uh, provided uh, health education and provided a lot of support. A lot of it has been virtual. Um, also happy to say that our staff was able to pull resources together along with the federal government to make sure that connectivity in all our, our housing projects had, uh, you know, Wi-Fi and the ability to connect, especially during the pandemic. Um, throughout the pandemic, we also had St. Mary's Food Pantry, the CBS Mobile Health Clinic, Cali's Mobile Bet, and the University of Arizona Clinic doing monthly check-ins and, and working alongside with folks. And so again, we're really excited for this project. We're excited for more projects. So yes, to HUD, I'll join the, the crowd in, in asking and supporting more and more projects like this and love working with, with the state and everybody up here. So thank you all so much. Enjoy the day, enjoy the GAIN event, and, and let's, let's get ready for the next one. Thank you.
Thank you, Councilman Garcia. We would certainly like to do a thousand more of these, so <laughs> we're ready. Um, I'm going to switch from my sunglasses to my reading glasses here. Um, you know, one of the very exciting things about a project like this is the fact that it's the public sector working together with the private sector and the nonprofit sector. And you'll hear from all three of those uh, sectors uh, here today. Um, but it's also every single level of government working in partnership with one another, from the federal to the state to the county to the city. And um, we have a very special guest uh, today, all the way from California, and it's uh, HUD's regional administrator for Region 9, Jason Pooh. And Jason covers the states of Arizona, California, Hawaii, Nevada, and the outer Pacific Islands. So I would say he has the best assignment at HUD of all the regions. Uh, <laughs> and Mr. Pooh is mayor and council member as well in Los Angeles County, uh, interestingly enough, and a business attorney with experience in real estate, finance, corporate, and venture capital. Uh, he hopes to utilize his business and local government experience in his role as regional administrator to align all levels of government, like I mentioned, federal, state, local, and tribal, and both the public and private sectors to work together in advancing HUD's mission uh, and addressing homelessness and housing affordability through Region 9. It's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Jason Pooh. Great to meet you, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon. Um, Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I am Jason Poo, the HUD Regional Administrator for Region 9. We, do, we cover seven time zones in two days because uh, the outer Pacific Islands are on the other side of the international date line. So it's always uh, you know, a, a, a challenge juggling our different time zones, including with uh, you know, headquarters in DC as well. So um, I also want to recognize Belinda, Tammy, Sharon and Thomas, they're here as part of our HUD local team, and so please feel free to connect with them um, and all these uh, future and uh, you know future projects and future opportunities for funding. Um, you know, I, I since I've been here today, I've really been impressed to see how many services are also provided uh, and uh, the you know quality of the housing that's been built here with some with some of the HUD's, HUD's funds in the Choice Neighborhoods program. So President Biden appointed me to this position at the end of last year, and I took office at the beginning of this year. It's definitely an honor and a privilege to serve in this role, particularly at this particular time in history. And it's also a pleasure to be here on behalf of HUD Secretary Marsha Fudge. Many thanks to the East, uh, Edison Eastlake community here, getting Arizonans involved in neighborhoods and the entire housing department here at the city of, of, of Phoenix as was mentioned, it takes all levels of government to work together and to organize this kind of a grand opening and celebration of Soluna. It's really just a fantastic accomplishment for the entire community. So I really want to give you another round of applause. And thank you all for attending and making time to celebrate uh, this grand opening. The Saluna project is, the, as you heard, the for, first choice neighborhoods mixed income housing development in the Edison Eastlake community. And as you know, HUD's choice neighborhood grants support local partners like those here today in the re revitalization of neighborhoods and the improvement and preservation of affordable housing units throughout the country. Saluna is a great example of what an affordable housing development should look like. It's a mixed income, income community and consists of 177 one bedroom to five bedroom units, all with, as the mayor mentioned, modern appliances and amenities, uh, washer and dryer, dishwasher, disposal, microwave, refrigerators, air conditioning and ceiling fans, and other common, uh, common area amenities, including community rooms, playgrounds, a computer lab, fitness center and green space with plenty of shade trees and obviously the space that we're in right here. It is so important, especially as we learned throughout the pandemic, to have community open space available for our, for our neighbors. So all of this makes the site a highly livable and truly turnkey uh, housing community. And in the few other minutes that I have here, I just wanted to highlight some of the other resources and ongoing work in the areas of affordable housing and homelessness that HUD is also doing in partnership with our state and local partners. In May of this year, President Biden announced a housing supply action plan 
aimed at closing the housing supply shortfall and bringing the cost of housing down for all Americans within the next five years. And just three weeks ago, on October 7th, the White House announced a, a progress to date on that housing supply action plan. The President's fiscal year 23 budget includes investments in housing that would finance up to 1 million new affordable homes and lead to the production and rehabilitation of another 500,000 homes for everyday Americans. This budget also includes enough funding to expand our Housing Choice Voucher or Section 8 program by 200,000 vouchers nationwide. It would be the single largest expansion of the program since its inception. It also includes a $50 billion housing supply action fund, $15 billion for more low-income housing tax credits or LIHTC, like the tax credits that are here in this project and a new $35 billion mandatory ongoing funding package that would provide resources directly to state, local, and tribal partners to invest in strategies to, and to acquire, develop, and build more affordable housing. As part of the October 7th update, the White House also announced regulations that will make it easier to build mixed income housing projects like Saluna with LIHTC. It will streamline Fannie and Freddie financing for affordable multifamily housing construction and it will promote more transit-oriented development uh, housing. So he, and here at HUD, we also recently awarded over 19,500 new housing choice vouchers to public housing authorities, like the city of uh, Phoenix, across the country, and made those vouchers more consistent with current market rates to help local communities like Phoenix keep up with and address the rapid rise in housing costs. On homelessness, HUD is working tirelessly to ensure that every American has a stable home, and that means doing everything in our power to end homelessness. Housing is a human right, and it's the foundation upon which health, mental health, education, and, eco and economic opportunities are based. HUD's House America Initiative is ensuring that we are rehousing people experiencing homelessness with appropriate and supportive wraparound services and creating additional affordable housing to address housing insecurity and to prevent further homelessness. Just three weeks ago, HUD made an unprecedented $379 million investment in Choice Neighborhoods funding available to communities across the country. And as you know, this Choice Neighborhoods funding was part of the inception, the planning grant for the Soluna apartments and part of the implementation, part of the financing stack to, to get it done and get it built. These grants will transform public and other HUD-assisted housing as well as surrounding neighborhoods. And all public housing authorities, local governments, and tribal entities are eligible. I certainly encourage all to apply. The fiscal year 22 funding was the highest amount of funding since the programs launched in 2010, and $150 million higher than the fiscal year 21 budget. These are all just a few examples of the work that HUD does every day in Arizona and around the country. And it all couldn't be done without the state, local, and private sector partners that you see here on this banner. So I'm actually really proud to be here to help celebrate this. If you have any questions about HUD services, programs, or initiatives, or like to know more about HUD's work, you can reach out to us at hud.gov and we'll connect you with the appropriate program staff. You know, just uh, want to really express a heart warm, a heartfelt and warm congratulations to the city of Phoenix, the Soluna Apartments community, and, and thank you again for your local par partnership, providing hundreds of Arizona's families and individuals with the safety, stability, and security of calling this place home, making an impact on addressing Phoenix's housing supply and affordable needs. It's housing that the mayor said that anyone would be proud to live in and anyone would be happy to live next to. I look forward to coming back for future grand openings because I know this is just uh, the first of uh, several phases of the overall plan for this area and uh, look forward to uh, continuing our work together with the city of Phoenix. Thank you so much. Thanks to HUD and Mr. Poo for being here and supporting our Choice Neighborhood Project. HUD has been a great partner and supporter of this project. I also want to recognize our local HUD offices and people who are present here today and the people working in the local office. They've been very supportive of us, especially as I transitioned from being a Deputy Housing Director to Housing Director. They were very collaborative in figuring out solutions to issues we had. One of the greatest successes we had in the last six months was increasing our public housing occupancy from 77% to 99%, Sharon. So, very good. 
Yeah. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Cindy Stotler, Deputy Director of Arizona Department of Housing and the former Housing Director of City of Phoenix. Cindy has been a great partner and Ado has been a great partner too in supporting this project by allocating funds for choice neighborhoods. Cindy came to Arizona Department of Housing in June of 2021 to serve as a Deputy Director in charge of operations. Since then, she has worked to streamline the agency's programs and operations, enhance partnerships and communication, implement the 197 million homeowner assistance program, increase gap financing for the construction of affordable housing, and distribute over $19 million in state housing trust funds. Prior to ADO, Cindy worked for the City of Phoenix for 31 years and held positions in five city departments, including planning and development, finance, budget, and police. For the last five years, Cindy was a director of the housing department, managing the city's public housing, sexual aid housing, and affordable housing and housing development programs. At this stage, please welcome Cindy Stotler. Thank you, Titus. Oh, I'm trying, trying to squint through the sun. <laughs> um, so the State Department of Housing, uh, the mission of the State Department of Housing is to address homelessness and affordable housing across the state. And um, we are the continuum of care, if you know what that is, for homelessness, um, for addressing homelessness in the balance of states. We want to thank HUD for that funding for the continuum of care, um, because we help uh, all the rural and uh, small towns around the state outside of Maricopa and Pima County address homelessness. Um, but affordable housing is also uh, a major part of our mission. And right now, the state is in a housing crisis. You know, the housing shortage has driven up rents and home prices to unaffordable levels um, to most of our local residents. And, and that's across the state, small communities, large communities. Um, and statewide, you know, homelessness has increased by 23%. So the, like everything else, the housing shortage has disproportionately affected the very low income families. And that's why the deeply affordable units at a place like Saluna are so dear to the state and so desperately needed. Um, and that's why also that ADO is pleased to support this Choice Neighborhoods project and, and pleased to announce that, you know, and, and this happened last year, but I'm saying it now, we actually changed the qualified allocation plan last year, it's a two-year plan, and that's what leads into um, low-income housing tax credit competition. We changed the plan to ensure a set-aside for Choice Neighborhoods in every year's competition so that we would make sure that these housing units like Soluna and Harmony at the park down here and all the other following units would get built. So we, that, that was a big deal for us. We are very committed to this, um, this kind of development and want to make sure that it happens. And we're hoping that other cities might take advantage, learn from Phoenix, and also uh, go for choice neighborhoods. So looking forward to that. Um, additionally, um, because we have such a, uh, a housing crisis, and you heard all of the HUD initiatives and the, and the federal initiatives, um, the state legislature this year gave $60 million to the Department of Housing Housing Trust Fund um, to help with gap financing and cost overruns and all that to build more affordable housing as well. And so Luna took advantage of that, and I'm sure we're going to see more um, applications from Gorman uh, for additional gap financing. But we're happy to have that money and happy to get it out to quality projects like Saluna. Um, I want to I want to take the opportunity now to acknowledge the staff, all of the staff that worked on Choice Neighborhoods. Um, as you've heard, I was here from the very beginning. Um, and I want to call out specifically Angela Duncan, uh, because Angela was truly the mastermind uh, behind Choice Neighborhoods. So I was the front man, and I had the opportunity to go out and speak on behalf of Choice Neighborhoods and, 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 and do all the speeches and things like that. But Angela was behind the scenes uh, working from the very beginning. And she is probably the best housing strategist I've ever met. So I want to give you credit, Angela, for making this happen. Great job. Should she stand up? Yes, Angela, stand up so people can see you. <laughs> this was also a, a huge collaboration, as you heard. You know, I'm looking at all the, the city departments. I think 25 city departments actually signed on um, for leverage, and uh, many of them are here today. The Parks Department, Neighborhood Services, the Police Department, a huge partner with the, with the Housing Department. Um, 
street transportation, um, and also uh, public works and the Phoenix IDA, as mentioned before, I see Juan Salgado in the audience. He actually gave me, I think, maybe my first check for um, leverage for the planning grant. So you do a planning grant for two years before you get implementation. So he started, you know, that many years ago with planning and then also helped buy land and, and all the other things at the IDA, selling bonds for all of our LIHTC projects. So we really appreciate that partnership. Um, I could probably go on forever. I'm, I'm just going to end with acknowledging, um, I want to recognize the mayor and Councilman um, Garcia. Um, we do these now statewide. I go statewide and, and talk to communities and locating affordable housing is really, really difficult in today's environment. And um, many cities and towns don't want it and, and, they, and they won't support it politically. And I just want to recognize, as, especially Mayor Gallego, because you've been with me from the very beginning, as you heard, you know, she was here when she was first ex elected to councilwoman, she came out and, and actually met with residents um, in all of our housing communities and asked them what we can do. And then, you know, put a lot of pressure on me, which I appreciated, but uh, let's do something, Cindy. Let's make something happen because they can't live like they need laundry facilities and they need quality housing. Um, so I appreciate that support and that push was very helpful. Um, but Phoenix is very lucky to have uh, the politicians that you have in Phoenix that support affordable housing. We have a lot of low-income housing tax credit projects happening in Phoenix, and it's one of the friendliest cities for affordable housing. And I think that your mayor and council deserve credit for that. So I really appreciate that. And thank you. And that's it. So from the Department of Housing, uh, you know, we're with you 100% on this and hope to, and all the way to the end to Sydney P. Osborne. Hopefully soon we'll see that project come in. Uh, congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much, Cindy. And let's keep that set aside in place for a few more years, please. <laughs> uh, that is a huge reason why we got the financing here that we did. So thank you very much for that. Um, I feel like I'm on the east side of Sun Devil Stadium, wishing I was on the west side of Sun Devil Stadium. It's, it's roasting over here. Yeah. So, uh, but I want to introduce one of my uh, friends over here who's roasting with me. Uh, the City of Phoenix is a very unique uh, nonprofit uh, entity uh, called the PCDIC. And you might wonder, what does that mean? That stands for the Phoenix Community Development Investment Corporation. And Ginger Spencer uh, was named the board chair of PCDIC in January of 2021 and has served on the board for over six years. In addition to her board chair role, Ginger is also a deputy city manager here for the city of Phoenix since May of 2021. Prior to that, she served as director of the city's public works department. Uh, and during her 23 years of service with the city of Phoenix, Ginger has served with various leadership positions and also serves on the board of directors for the Arizona Science Center, that must be cool, and the Arizona City County Management Association. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to welcome to the podium, Ginger Spencer. Thank you, Brian. All right, so I'd like to start off with a few acknowledgments. So to our mayor, Kate Gallego, and to council member Carlos Garcia, thank you both for your leadership on this project and your support. I'd also like to salute my colleagues. We, you heard them mention earlier, but Deputy City Manager Gina Montes, who has oversight for the Housing Department, and Deputy City Manager Inger Erickson, who has oversight for Parks Department. So thank you, ladies. I'd also like to give a heartfelt thanks to our CEO of the Phoenix IDA, who also supports the PCDIC. And you heard his name mentioned earlier, but I'd like to acknowledge him again, Mr. Juan Salgado. Thank you. So I'm here today on behalf of the PCDIC and the Phoenix IDA. So you can kind of see I have my community hat on <laughs> this afternoon. Both the PCDIC and the Phoenix IDA are both proud sponsors of this project. We are happy and very proud to be a part of this project and one of the early supporters of Saluna Park. PCDCIC's mission is to improve the quality of life for individuals who live and work in underserved areas. The Phoenix IDA's mission is to provide access to capital and strives to positively impact vulnerable populations. So it is my honor to stand up here today to represent both board of directors for both organizations. The Phoenix IDA's partnership on this project goes back to 2016. 
as Cindy mentioned earlier. When the city asked the Phoenix IDA to support their HUD application for a Choice Neighborhoods Housing Grant, the Phoenix IDA gave $50,000 to the city for their application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Over time, the Phoenix IDA also purchased land in the Choice Neighborhood and sold it back to the city when the project was ready. In 2017, the Phoenix IDA also approved $8 million in bond funds for Saluna Park 2 project. And also, PCDIC has partnered with the City of Phoenix Housing Department, specifically with Angela, <laughs> on affordable housing loans. And PCDIC provided $5 million to the City of Phoenix's fund, and $1 million of that $5 million was contributed to this project. So on behalf of the Phoenix PCDIC and the Phoenix IDA, we are again proud partners of this project. And what I would say is to Titus and the housing team, to Brian and the Gorman team, to the city of Phoenix, to all the housing staff, to Saluna Park, and to all of the partners on this project, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. So representing Phoenix ID and PCDIC, my next goal is to get $5 million won for the next phases, right? <laughs> so, so at this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Eva Olivas, Executive Director and CEO of Phoenix Revitalization Corporation, a nonprofit community development corporation dedicated to the revitalization of the neighborhoods by facilitating community improvement projects and the maintenance and creation of low-income and workforce housing. Ms. Olivers has been with PRC for about 17 years and has served as CEO for 15 years. During this time, she launched Communities for All Ages initiative and has remained committed to valuing the participation of all ages in PRC's programs. Ms. Olivers has volunteered to serve on multiple groups, boards, and City of Phoenix committees to promote her vision of equal and fair access and promoting community voices. Eva has also made sure that I keep the community engaged and serve their needs as well. So she reminds me constantly. So Eva, please come to the stage and give your speech. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, um, there's no doubt that the city of Phoenix has the wisest, the wisest um, officials here. Mayor, thank you so much for all your contributions. I've worked with her uh, in this district for many years. Um, and she can tell you I'm at her door all the time. Uh, where's the people's voice? Um, I also want to thank Councilman Garcia for the many days that he opens his door to hear the voice of the people here, um, not just here, but in all his district. For HUD, I can only tell you you're smart to sponsor this project. <laughs> and for all the other funders, you know, get ready because the City of Phoenix well deserves everything that we get. <laughs> um, you know, a project like this is only successful if you have every layer of persons involved. And the most important for the work that I do is the voice of the people who you serve. So the city of Phoenix, don't, they don't just submit uh, proposals. They are quality proposals. They include every single thing that needs to be included, but most importantly, they want to hear from the people. We have been working on this project for, I think, four years. Previously, we worked on Hope 6 with uh, um, Zona. Um, and, and I have to tell you, the two people who are our liaisons to this project is Zona Pacheco and Courtney Anderson, who have been amazing, amazing in serving this community. We were uh, asked to form a resident leadership council. Many times projects like this go into neighborhoods who sometimes they don't realize they have a voice. Sometimes they don't realize they have the responsibility to use that voice. And what we have done is created a team of people who are our messengers into the community, who bring people to meetings, who talk about the design and the color. They had conversations about how to set up this facility here. They made their voice known on how they wanted to see things happen. 
I want very much for you to recognize some of the Resident Leadership Council because they are tabling, but we do have a few members here today who go to meeting after meeting after meeting and have conversations outside of those meetings to make things better here in this community. So will those Resident Leadership Council members stand up? So thank you so much for your service. Thank you to this project for listening to, uh, to all the people who live here. It's a beautiful site. I, I'm a native Phoenician, so I know how this has transformed. Uh, I'm so grateful to work and honored to work with this group. And I, I commend the city for uh, investing so much time in allowing our residents to grow and learn and to contribute to ideas like this. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. I've worked with Eva for a long time. Our first project we worked on together was the redevelopment of the Cofelt Lamoureux public housing development at 19th Avenue and Buckeye. And her leadership training with the residents was just unbelievable. And by the end of the training series, the residents would get up and go to city council budget hearings and they lobbied for a hawk crossing at 19th uh, Avenue. And they got it built for $200,000 investment because the residents were uh, educated on the process and how to advocate. So Eva's just fantastic. And she had the residents so involved here, they even named the, every one of these projects. So Saluna is a combination of the sun and the moon. And the residents uh, did a naming exercise and came up with that. So they were literally involved in every aspect um, of this effort. So thank you, Eva. Um, this is the last time you have to hear from me, so I wanted to take just a quick second and uh, give a shout out to my team, led by Sally Schwen, our Arizona market president. Thank you, Sally. Raise your hand. And uh, Gorman and Company has a booth uh, over here with information on leasing as well for both Saluna as well as what's coming at Harmony at the Park. Uh, we have folks from our construction team here uh, that are on the site every day uh, helping build these projects. We have our architectural design team here uh, and our full property management team as well. So if you're interested in learning more about how this all comes together, feel free to uh, visit us at the Gorman booth. Um, I'm going to introduce our final speaker, and just to celebrate the community uh, even further, uh, I want to introduce uh, Bernice Trujillo, who's a 23-year-old Arizona State University student, go Devils, uh, at the downtown Phoenix campus, majoring in community health, and is also interested in architecture, psychology, and social work. For the past 11 years, Bernice has lived with her mom, sister, and two beloved Chihuahuas in the Edison East Lake community. She's a spiritual person and believes in the importance of education, family, and overcoming challenges. Her hobbies include reading romance novels, painting, the art of meditation, and learning through TikTok. I'm not sure what that is, but, uh, but it is my honor and privilege to uh, introduce to everyone Bernice Trujillo. I'm Bernice. <clears throat> um, when Courtney reached out to me, I wasn't really sure how serious of a tone this was going to be. And so I'm a little nervous. I may or may not faint. Just beware. Um, so yeah, I'm a resident here. I've been here for about 13 years or something. Um, and I'm going to give a little bit of my backstory. So right before transitioning into the Edison Eastlake community, I was around 11 years old. I am now 23 for reference. And I was ready to move to Mexico. My mother was experiencing many challenges my younger sister and I could not entirely comprehend. But when life happens, God strengthens us. Although my father was my absolute idol, I could tell there was something odd about him. Long story short, he refinanced our ho house behind my mother's back, dropped us off to stay with my aunt, all while my mother was in the beginning stages of developing a melon-sized tumor in her womb. It was a little tough when my mom had to switch the roles of being the housewife to becoming the sole breadwinner. Around that time, everyone wanted to look over my grandparents. They lived comfortably over there in Mexico, and so everyone thought it would be the perfect segue to another country. We had most of our stuff shipped out when my mother received a phone call uh, from the city offering a spot within the EEC. I grew to love Edison East Lake community because of how much you can tell they care. Concerns are always addressed, opinions acknowledged, but I mostly love that this is an opportunity for many families who may experience the short end of the stick. 
Now I feel closer to achieving the American dream. I'll be graduating soon, claiming the title of being the first generation student, with my sister following closely behind. I am just excited to take advantage of what EEC has to offer, which was for me the best stepping stone. So, thank you. Thank you, Bernice, for your service to the community. Finally, we want to try and wrap this up because I know everybody is getting impatient. I want to thank Courtney Anderson and Jessica Foreman for hosting this event and working around this event and for spending many hours coordinating this event. So thank you both for doing this. I also want to thank the entire team of housing and I want to call out Angela Duncan, Deputy Housing Director, for leading the efforts for Saloon on behalf of housing. So thank you, Angela. Brad Puffer, Nichelle, Daniel Passage, Teresha, Bill Suttle, Giuliano, Sylvia for their work on Choice Neighborhoods program, and Saluna in particular. Thank you to Zona Pacheco, Nadia Moreno, and the entire Housing Support Services team for supporting this community as well. Thank you. I also want to thank the relocation team, the property management team, the Housing Choice Voucher team, the Asset Management team, and the Management Services team for being the behind the scenes and spending a lot of time and energy and resources to support this event and the Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant. So thank you to all housing staff. So with all the housing staff, raise your hand. <laughs> Go housing. So I also want to thank all the city departments, service providers and financing partners supporting this project. There are many and all are listed here today. And many volunteers are donating their time to help with the event today. Thank you to all the speakers for coming out this afternoon and spending a little time with us. We'll now head over to Saluna for the ribbon cutting and photos. Please enjoy all that is to offer on, at the event, including the two food trucks, courtesy the Phoenix IDA, so thank you. And all the meals are free, by the way. So the performance will be on stage, as well as please visit all our partners who have booths and activities here planned today. So thank you very much and thanks for coming out.